Hello there, this is Doris Pinter of Library Arts. I want to welcome you to my program today. Today, we're going to create a beautiful painting of a cherry blossom tree on a picture frame window. This window is made out of plexiglass, but you can use real glass too. We're going to be painting the back and the front of our picture. We have a template to guide you through the drawing. I'll guide you through the color mixing and we'll get a little sprinkle of glitter when you're done. And I think you're gonna be thrilled. This is a real wow project. So let's go ahead and get started by talking about your materials. All right, we're gonna go over your materials. So once again, we're working on a picture frame. So this is a nice frame because it's very blocky, so it can stand vertically or horizontally very easily. It's a five by seven picture frame. I actually got this at Ikea, but you could get a suitable picture frame, say at the dollar store, Target, any place like that. We are going to do some work on the frame. So when you get your picture, you're gonna notice that what I have done to the picture frame is I have put the set away. I've already uh, taken all the stuff that normally comes with a picture frame, the mat, the fake photo. I've taken all that out. And if you look closely here in the corners, I have put some hot glue to secure the, the uh, glass or plexiglass back into the frame. And I have um, just push the pins down to also help to secure the picture. These little pins are really important to press down. Then once you've done that, you're really ready to go with the drawing. So what are we gonna do first? Well, um, you're gonna notice in your picture frame that there's already a couple of pieces of tape inside the frame. The reason why we have that tape, and I'm just putting it in right now so you can see, is that is going to secure your image of the um, cherry blossom tree. So I have a cherry blossom tree outline that I've already done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press it face down over that glass. So it's very easy for you to see what you're gonna get. So I'm gonna take it. Now remember this is front facing downwards. This is the back of the frame. I've already probably pressed this down for you. If I haven't, you can do it yourself. You're also going to get a blank sheet of paper the same size. So I'm going to reorient this just a little bit, make it a little straighter. So when I flip it over, I see the picture the way I want to see it. Yep. Okay, you're also just gonna get a plain piece of paper if you wanna do your own design. You could easily just tape your design in here in the same way. So what that does is it's gonna give you something to trace. So what I'm gonna do now is the tracing bit of the project, and that involves uh, having a black Sharpie, Sharpie marker, and you're gonna use that whether you're gonna do your own tracing of your own design or you're gonna to choose to do something with my drawing. Either one works. So let's get started with this one. So again, I'm just, the tape is holding it down. I think I'm just gonna put a little extra piece of tape, piece of circle tape. And again, if yours is a little loose like that, you can do the same. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is just start to trace my design. So I have a tree coming out of the corner, and I'm just gonna use my marker to trace over the branches. They don't have to be super dark. You just want to get the basic branches in here. If you wanna add a few more, you can. You don't want to um, draw any flowers because we're gonna paint those in separately. So here we go. I'm gonna continue tracing this on, but I want you to go ahead and trace your own drawing. When you're done, simply, and you can see already the drawings coming through, peel off your paper, okay? I'll see you in a minute. Go ahead and trace your own drawing. Okay, materials part two. So, 
got your drawing done. See, it's just easy and breezy to see on your frame, so you're going to be ready for that step next. Um, you're also going to have some white paint. You'll have uh, some cups of colored paints with additional white, the primaries, black, and brown. And then you should have a small cup of silver glitter, which is really meant as literally just an accent on top of your work at the very end. So that we're not going to need for a while. So let's go ahead and start talk about start talking about how we're going to add the color to the back of the frame, which is what we're going to do first. So putting these colored uh, cups aside for a minute, I'm going to get my frame, putting it face down. So again, my tree is on this side of the picture. I want it face down. So I'm going to put it down like that on the paper. I am going to pour some white paint in here. Now, you need to decide what color you want your paint to be. Here I use like a minty green, and you can see it's not even that um, strong. It's just a very pale, light green. And so if you want green, you're just going to do a little yellow and blue. You could do a, a pale pink sky. You could do a, um, a blue sky. But I'm going to just put a little bit of yellow in here. Cleaning my brush in between. A little bit of blue. And I'm using a paper towel to uh, dry my brush, by the way, because I don't want um, excess water. In fact, I want the super driest brush I can possibly get because a wet brush is gonna make your paint very thin. Now, that looks like a mess, but we're quickly going to change into something better. So I'm just gonna take my paper towel and I'm actually gonna crumble it up. So it's kind of like a little ball, but I wanna make sure I have a little handle to hold on to it. So I'm just giving a little twist. And now what I want you to do, first kind of get that color mixed up into kind of a greenish, a light greenish, yellowish, aqua color. And look what I'm doing, I'm just dabbing. Now the reason why I'm not using the paintbrush for this is because a lot of times what happens if people get so obsessed with stroking the brush, they actually uh, don't cover the back of the frame. And the goal here is to cover the picture so that when you flip it over, you're just gonna see the tree. And notice that I'm getting some paint on the inside of the frame. I don't really care. That's the back. It's not going to be a problem. If it really bothers you, you can clean it off with a baby wipe later. It doesn't bother me. So I'm getting sort of a light yellowy blue green on there. And that's exactly what I wanted. So I'm just going to flip it over. And ooh, look at that. I have some beautiful colors showing. Now, if that blue is not quite what I want, I'm just going to come back and dab it a little more. So you're gonna flip it to see what it looks like. I actually love that yellow over there because that yellow makes it look like it's peeking through. So you may wanna mix it more than I did. You may even wanna mix it in advance in your cup of white. I thought I'd keep my cup of white just in case I needed more, but you could always mix that up into a green, a pink, or a light blue. And again, I'm just dabbing. If you have a pouncer, like a foam pouncer brush, you could use that too. The key is to put it on thick Move it around till you like it, but when you pick it up, I really like that. I think I'm gonna leave it just about like that, although I do see a spot I missed over there, so I'm gonna make sure I get over into that corner, all the corners, in fact. And yes, it looks a mess, but we're gonna clean that up shortly. So, finish that up. Now my hands are a little bit dirty. I'm gonna stop here. So make sure all down here is covered up too. I'm gonna throw away my paper towel and I'm going to clean the outer edges. I'm not worried about the inside, but the outer edges, okay? You go ahead, work with your paint, creating the color you want. Again, you can mix it in the cup in advance, then pour it in, don't pour it all in. I still got a lot of white paint here, but pour a nice thick amount so that you're not gonna see uh, 
the table coming through, okay? See you in a minute, have some messy fun. Okay, so I just cleaned off the edges here. I'm going to carefully flip it over, being careful not to put my fingertips anywhere onto that wet paint because it will smear and we do not want smearing. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna begin to paint in the tree. So you're going to need your brown and your black paint. And I wouldn't, you know, open up all of them if you don't need them all right now. I think it's smart if you have a small brush that can get into detailed areas like this or maybe one like this. These are not fancy brushes, believe me, so don't worry about that. So I'm going to just begin by putting some brown paint, again, making sure my brush is super dry by dabbing my brush on the paper towel even before I dip it into the paint. I'm gonna put some brown paint, and this is acrylic paint, by the way, right onto the tree trunk. And then what I like to do is work in small strokes with the tip, just the tip of my brush like this. Okay, then I'm gonna bring in a little bit of black to deepen that brown. And I'm this is called wet into wet when you're just taking the wet paint into the wet paint. And you're just going to make sure you're filling in all of your branches. Now, if you want to, again, add another branch or two, that's fine, that's perfectly okay. I like a darker bark, so I'm using a bit more black in mine because I just like the contrast of the rich, dark bark color compared to the bright blossoms. So my bark, I'm just mixing it here. You could also mix the black and brown together on a little palette, on a paper plate, on a um, sheet of foil. So that's really beginning to look nice. Make sure you get all the way down up to the edge of the frame. So I want you to do that with yours. Figure out if you want it to look very dark brown like mine. You could do a pale brown with white. You could even do a gray, like almost like a birch bark. So any of those are fine. And by the way, when you get your frame, you're probably either gonna get a white one or a black one. Um, I just get half and half and then let the patron choose which one or the learner, which one they want to work with. So go ahead and paint in your tree bark and I'll see you back here in a minute. Please do not touch the wet paint on the back. Leave it alone. Don't risk getting fingerprints on it, especially if you pick it up to look at it don't touch the back. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. As you can see here, I have uh, completed my tree. It actually is still wet, but we're gonna continue working on this even though the painting is wet. It's not gonna be a problem. Now, in order to create the blossoms for your tree, I would pick a color that you like doesn't have to be in the pink family. You may like purples or you may like yellows. Pick a color that you like. I'm gonna recreate the pinks and reds here. And so I'm gonna be using um, red and white. So that's basically red with the addition of white is called tinting. So I'll be tinting the red paint with white and creating various tints of red. I may also add a little bit of yellow just for color, and I might add a little sun that'll either be white or light yellow up in the corner. So in order to mix those tints and shades, I would suggest if you have a paper plate or a sheet of foil, you keep that nearby so you can mix your colors and have them like a little palette next to your workspace. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna open up the white, the red, the yellow. Now, if you wanna do something like a purple, um, you're just gonna use a little red and blue. If you wanted some green, you of course would uh, just use a little bit of yellow and blue. Uh, yellow and orange for orange. 
I'm sorry, yellow and red for orange, yellow and blue for green, red and blue for purple. And all of this is going to get tinted by white. So I actually have so much extra white paint here. I'm gonna pour some onto my foil and then I can use that to mix the colors I need. So I'm gonna first take out, you know, just some pure red here. And I'm gonna leave a little puddle of red for when I want to do red. I'm gonna also, um, Put some more red over here but this time I'm going to add some white to it to create a very you know start of a nice tint of pink so we got a nice you know sort of a corally pinky red there and what happens is each time you add a bit of white you're making a tint so let's make another tint of red so I'm gonna put some here, and as I go down, I think I'm gonna to try to make it a little lighter each time. So I'm gonna slide this over, just so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna take more of the white this time, a little bit more, just scooping it up with my brush. And now I'm gonna mix that together to get a lighter red, a lighter, more pinky red than I just had. So you can see that that's slightly darker. Add a little bit more white. And now what you can do for the third one is you can actually take some of that pink you just made and add still more white to it. So now I have three tints of pink, the lightest being the last one here. Then you got the medium one here. And finally, the darkest tint of red. You see how I just added a bit more red to give it a little more contrast? So I have my three tints, and I'm actually gonna clean my brush and add a bit more red here. And I'm going to put a little bit of yellow down because sometimes I like to put a little touch of yellow in the center of my flower, so I like to do that, so I'm gonna put a little bit, not much, but just a little bit of yellow, just so I have it available if I wanna add yellow. Now what I like to do is I like to start with sort of the mid-tones, the medium tones, and what I like to do is imagine that, you know, the flowers are coming off the branches and they're overlapping the bark a bit, they're overlapping each other at times, but basically I like to think of them as just sort of blobs of color that I'm just gonna put down randomly where I think the flower is going to be. Like that. I'll put some over here. And if a little brown gets mixed in there, just clean your brush. Don't worry about it. And you can then scoop up some more of the tinted colors. But again, you could even mix it. I've had people make blue and pink and yellow blossoms. It's really up to you. So you can see they're already taking shape, but watch what happens when I start to go back and start popping a little burst of red, pure red, right in the center of some, but not all of the flowers. It adds a really beautiful touch of color without being heavy handed. Again, I don't necessarily do them all like that. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna start putting some of these mid-tone flowers also growing over here. Maybe sometimes they're clustered, sometimes there's just a few. I don't wanna make it too even because I find that if it looks too even, it really makes a less interesting work. It's good to occasionally just have a couple blooms 
and then maybe a larger cluster elsewhere. So I'm going to keep going over here. I think I'm going to add a few over here. I'm going to get some more red. And I'm just going to, again, just, you know, pop in some bright red on top of that freshly painted pink. Just adding a little bright touch of color here and there, but not on every flower. And then I think I'm going to start bringing in the lightest pink. I'm going to start highlighting some of those flowers, some of the ones I didn't touch as well as some of the ones I definitely did touch already. And again, you decide how full your tree is going to look. You can also go in with some pure white. That looks beautiful on these flowers. Like that, almost as if, you know, some are not even quite in bloom yet. Maybe there's a couple that are just buds still and have not even gotten any color yet. I'm just using the very tip of my brush. I'm not really painting flowers. I'm just painting buds that are kind of like blossoms. And now I want to go in to add a little bit of yellow, which is sort of a refreshing pop for some of the flowers. They don't, and the yellow is literally like little droplets coming off. And I like that, just that little contrast of yellow is so pretty. I just love it. But you, again, need to do what you want, make it your way. But again, I wouldn't fuss about making blossoms. Blossoms are blobs of color. You look at a Monet and you say, how did he paint those gorgeous flowers? He used dots of paint, layered clumps, dots strokes of paint. We're not looking at beautifully formed flowers unless it's a close-up detail. And he was all about the color mixing through your eye from a distance. So that's how he worked. Now I kind of like what I have there and I'm thinking about that idea of having like a really pretty little sun. So I'm thinking I might take a little white a little bit of this leftover yellow. It might just make a super simple, very pale yellow. Like just a super simple sun up here in the corner. And that is really all you need to do for your paint. So you can close up your paint, save them for another project, because you've got plenty of paint. I didn't even touch my blue. Well, I did touch my blue, but not very much. Now let's move this paint aside. This is where a little magic comes in that I think you will love. We're gonna open up that little glitter container and you're gonna sprinkle a little bit of that extra fine silver glitter. And extra fine is really important for this project because if you don't get extra fine, it literally will be clunky and clumpy on your picture. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of extra right here in the sun, because I really want it to stick to that picture. And I'm not gonna use it all. I'm just going to sprinkle it around my picture. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with this gorgeous um, glitter, just highlighting, and you can just shake that extra off, the flowers in your picture. And look what you end up with, the most gorgeous, beautiful, 
cherry blossom picture. You don't touch the back while you're picking it up, by the way. You can just wipe off any glitter, any paint that may have gotten on here. Oh, I have a little dot of red that'll come off with a baby wipe. So that is that. So I hope you enjoyed this program today. Uh, it's easy to make because I'm giving you that template. You need simple colors. <clears throat> you can use whatever colors you want for the blossoms, and I guarantee you're going to get beautiful results. This is Doris Venter of Library Arts. Thank you for joining me today. Stay healthy, stay creative, and I hope I see you soon. Bye.